Good morning, everyone, and welcome to the uh, United Church of Beloit's worship service on the second Sunday of June 2020. Well, I'd like to uh, be able to hope that uh, everybody's having a, a good weekend this weekend and enjoying uh, being outside. And uh, we, we hope that uh, you, you tune in to this service uh, sometime during this weekend. And as normal, uh, the bulletin's going to be mailed out uh, today. Uh, this is Saturday that we're recording. And uh, go ahead and download that bulletin and the hymns and look at the liturgy so you can follow along uh, while uh, you're hearing some music played by uh, our organist, uh, Elaine Uffenbeck, who uh, is still playing music for us right now. As normal, we're going to use the uh, Zoom uh, teleconference uh, as a means to have a coffee fellowship time at 11 o'clock on this Sunday, uh, June 14th. So you should have received an email about this on Friday for the link to the Zoom teleconference. And I look forward to uh, seeing everybody on Sunday in that call. Finally, in, in June, we're going to be uh, continuing with our, our worship and fellowship at home as well as conducting all of our board meetings uh, by Zoom teleconferences. And uh, the UCB subcommittee on reopening the church uh, did meet this past week. And you hopefully uh, received uh, a survey by email if you're on the email list. Uh, yesterday, Francine sent it out. And uh, we're, we're also going to be sending it out, or did send it out by uh, a postal uh, mail. So we ask that you would Take a look at that survey, fill it out, and get it back to us uh, by some means, either sending it to the church or emailing it back to us in the next uh, five days or so, if you could, so we can use that information to make some decisions uh, in opening up the church again uh, uh, in, in, the, in the near future. And it won't be in June, I can, I can assure you that right now. Uh, I believe those are the announcements for the morning. So at this time, I would invite you to join with me uh, in the call to worship, and you'll find that in the bulletin. Do you not know? Have you not heard? The Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth. He will not grow tired or weary, and his understanding no one can fathom. He gives strength to the weary and increases the power of the weak. Even youths grow tired and weary, and young men stumble and fall. But those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength. They will soar on wings like eagles, and they will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not faint. Our opening hymn uh, this day is Jesus Calls Us. So let's, uh, if you're, you know, when you're at home watching this, uh, find the words and sing joyfully.
Let's join together uh, this morning in our prayer of, of invocation. Our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, we must confess we are naturally resistant to your teaching of sacrifice and suffering, wanting instead to take shortcuts and a less painful way of being your disciples. But because of your great example of courage and strength in facing up to evil and overcoming sin by the death on a cross, we will follow where you lead us, Lord, fighting the good fight for justice, keeping the faith in humbleness, finishing the race for mercy. We pray we can do this in the peace and the power of your name. Amen. So this Sunday we can keep on praying for some of the same people that we have been uh, over the past few weeks and that includes uh, Marilyn who is, is making progress in her rehabilitation uh, at a facility from surgery. Uh, Jeannie who is on the mend pretty well uh, in her rehab from surgery. Uh, Russ, who uh, is, is uh, hanging in there in the care facility that he's in. And let us continue to pray for George. Uh, George is uh, going to a, a rehabilitation facility uh, today uh, as I speak. And uh, he's still got some um, uh, medical issues that he's uh, dealing with. And uh, it's uncertain as to uh, what's going to be going on in, in, in the future. but. Pray for George that uh, he uh, gets, gets strengthened in his body and his, his mind uh, and that uh, we're going to set up a, a schedule for people uh, visiting George in, in Madison uh, at the facility. So contact me if you'd be uh, willing to uh, pay him a visit and, uh, and sit with him for, for a bit uh, sometime in the, in the coming weeks. And I'll put together a schedule uh, along with his family uh, who are not in town here, uh, but they will be visiting off and on in the, in the weeks to come. So let me know if you'd like to go visit George sometime. Also, keep on praying for the people we have, for our, uh, the people uh, who are caring for uh, others in the hospitals uh, and, the, and the care facilities uh, that are our heroes and are just giving their all to help people be healed. Uh, people who are sick, let us pray for them. Uh, let us be in prayer for people who have lost loved ones during this time, be it because of the COVID-19 uh, virus or for other uh, reasons. Uh, pray for the Lord's comforting for them. And continue to pray for our church, uh, the opportunities we have to serve, uh, while we are, are not meeting in the building, we can still serve the Lord in so many other ways uh, through our family and, and our community and by contacting each other in some fashion. Uh, look for opportunities to do that in this coming week. Continue to pray for our, our nation uh, as far as the, the, the protests that are, that are going on, especially for peace, that, uh, that people would, would work together to uh, voice their concerns and be heard during this time, but do it in, a, in a, a peaceful way as much as possible. So I invite you at this time to be still, listen to the Lord's voice and what he's saying, and I pray that God will listen to our voice as well. Let us come before the Lord in prayer. Let us pray. Oh God, our Heavenly Father, we, we thank you for this time in our service that we can come before you and just share the, uh, openly uh, the concerns and needs of our hearts and, and lives. And we trust that you will listen to us and that you indeed will, will help us uh, in our times of, of need. And not just being needy, but also being thankful for the many blessings you have given to us and, and adoring you for who you are and how much you 
care for us and love us and grant us mercy and, and strength in our lives. Lord, we confess that we have fallen short of your glory and we ask your forgiveness for areas in our lives that, that need redemption and, and healing and for those things that we have not done as well this past week. Uh, help us to become aware of, of how we can care for other people around us and right in front of us. Bring to mind people that we don't think about often and prod us to call them or contact them. And, and uplift them this day. Lord, we want to continue to pray for, uh, for Marilyn and, and for uh, Jeannie and Russ and, and George, uh, members of our, of our church family. Please comfort them, strengthen them, help them, uh, be with them in, in their isolation, uh, be with their families who are attempting to care for them as best they can from a distance. Lord, we, we ask your blessing upon each of these people and others in our church family that we are aware of. Father, we need your help in, in, as a nation in how we, we handle issues, uh, the big issues, the, the issues like racism that has been there for so many years uh, in our history as a nation. And we, we do pray, Lord, for change, for the things that we do need to transform uh, in our lives and in our communities. Uh, protect everybody who's, uh, who's out there uh, voicing their, their uh, concerns and feelings and opinions. Uh, help them, Lord, to do this safely, uh, whether it uh, be controlling their, their, their anger, uh, be it protecting them from uh, becoming ill for any reason. Be with our, our police departments and, and give them wisdom and help them to look at themselves and, and how they uh, serve and protect uh, our communities. Be with them, Lord, in special ways. Lord, we, we continue to pray for our, our government leaders in our own community here as well as in our state and country. Uh, touch them, Lord, and, and, and help them make good decisions. Give them wisdom. Uh, help them to be willing to, to work together with, with everyone for the common good. Be with them, Lord. And Father, we, we also come before you in, in prayer this, this day and want to join together uh, in, in praying the prayer that Jesus taught his disciples to pray and that we have learned. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. So we come to our, our time of, of giving this day in the way of our offering, and, and uh, we, we thank you for, uh, for people who have uh, sent their, your offering in the mail this week. Please continue to do so. Uh, you've been a great blessing uh, these past few months, and uh, we ask that you continue to do this and, and to ask God to, to bless what is given to him and to the ministry of this church. Let's pray for the offering this day. Lord, we, we thank you for uh, what, I, what I hold in my hand right now and, and ask that you would take that and, and use that uh, to reach out to not just our, our church people, but to the, the people in our community and in our country and around the world. Uh, be with our, our ministries, Lord, uh, with support of all the groups in town here that, that minister uh, and, and, and that we help them in that way. Be with, be with each one of us. Use us, not just in our giving of, of, of money, but also the giving of our time and our, and our energy and our talents. Use us, Lord, mightily. Touch us and prod us to reach out to others, especially during this time. As we pray for these gifts in Christ Jesus' name. Amen.
God's word for our lives today is taken from the gospel according to John chapter 1 verses 43 through 51. The next day, Jesus decided to leave for Galilee. Finding Philip, he said to him, follow me. Philip, like Andrew and Peter, was from the town of Bethsaida. Philip found Nathanael and told him, we have found the one Moses wrote about in the law and about whom the prophets also wrote, Jesus of Nazareth, the son of Joseph. Nazareth, can anything good come from there? Nathanael asked. Come and see, said Philip. When Jesus saw Nathanael approaching, he said to him, Here is a true Israelite in whom there is nothing false. How do you know me? Nathanael asked. Jesus answered, I saw you while you were still under the fig tree before Philip called you. Then Nathanael declared, Rabbi, you are the Son of God. You are the King of Israel. Jesus said, You believe because I told you I saw you under the fig tree. You shall see greater things than that. He then added, I tell you the truth. You shall see heaven open and the angels of God ascending and descending on the Son of Man. May God add his blessing to the reading of his word this day. This morning I want you to think back to when you were a kid. And try to remember who your heroes were then. Who were your heroes back in the day? For me, it's, it's been a while, but I still haven't forgotten mine. And because we represent various age groups and, and interests and tastes, I know our heroes will be different and mine primarily come from the 1950s and 60s. I remember my twin brother and I wearing coonskin caps, walking around the house together and, and even outside, singing at the top of our lungs, Davy, Davy Crockett, King of the Wild Frontier. He was a good man brave and, and wise, fair and loyal and, and resourceful. And above all, he was an expert marksman with the long rifle. To us and millions of other kids, he was a hero, especially to my twin brother, whose given name was David. I remember my brother and I having these plastic fencing swords and they and they had a piece of, of chalk at the end of them and we, we would have these fantastic sword fights and and both of us would, would wear black masks and capes and we would be jumping over and, and onto furniture as we fought and going from one room to another room if we had had a chandelier back then we probably would have swung from it and we each would, would make this noise and this sign to each other as we fought. This is what we would make, would be shh, shh, shh. And by the time we were through, both of us and everything around us, including my mom, who tried to get in the middle of us to break it up while, uh, while we, before we destroyed the whole house, we were all covered with these, with these chalky Zs. The Mark Zerl always made and left as he saved the day. And then I remember playing superheroes with my brother. And, and one of us would, would sneak into the bathroom and, and grab a, cup of, uh, a, a couple of bathroom towels. Uh, and we would tie them around our necks. 
as our capes and we we would we would fly around the backyard with our with our arms stretched out and we we'd make these pathetic little muscles with our bare chests and arms and we'd wrestle each other and if one of us was pretending to be Superman was winning the, the wrestling match the other one of us we'd, we'd whip out a rock that had been painted green and say it was kryptonite and then Superman would have to let go and and pretend to be weak until he could crawl far enough away from the from the green kryptonite rock and then he'd, he'd get his super strength back again and the wrestling match would get going all over again my favorite baseball hero was Sandy Koufax because he played for the LA Dodgers and he and he struck out tons of batters and pitched lots of no hitters and he threw left-handed like I did. I even have a picture of Koufax on my computer screen and on two of the walls in my office at home to remind me of how much I liked and admired him back then and even today. My favorite hitter was Mickey Mantle because he was a New York Yankee and he was a switch hitter like I was and he hit lots of home runs like I didn't. And I wore his number seven on my baseball jersey whenever I could get it on the baseball teams I played for. We could spend hours, or at least I could, talking and sharing about the heroes that we had when we were growing up and those who we admire and, and hold in, in high esteem today. So what is a hero anyway? Well, Daniel Borstein, a historian and Pulitzer Prize winning author says this, a hero is someone known for achievement, who reveals the possibilities of human nature, who makes history and not just the news. Abraham Jehuda said, there is no social transformation without heroes. The hero shows the people what may be accomplished, leaving them to live as they once thought impossible. I would define a hero as someone we admire because of their courage in the face of, of danger and oppression without regard for their own comfort or safety. It's someone we look up to who inspires and amazes us, who has abilities and, and gifts far beyond our own. It's someone who can rise above the ordinary or expected or accepted and affect the world around them, or at the very least, carve out their own niche. A hero is someone we put up on a pedestal and revere until they jump off or fall off, or we, we push them off or we tire of them and replace them with someone who is bigger and better to meet our needs and our standards of what our hero is at that time in our life. I believe it doesn't matter what age we are. We each need heroes in our lives. And in fact, we each have the potential for being heroes ourselves. Sometimes it's a matter of being in the right place at the right time and acting for the right reason. And sometimes it's a matter of being in the wrong place at the wrong time and having it thrust upon us. Most people don't plan to be a hero. It just happens. 
Well, this morning's scripture lesson from the Gospel of John, it's an excellent example of how the process of, of hero worship occurs. It involves one particular person discovering the greatest hero of all heroes in a very unexpected and winsome way. There was a group of men who were searching for their ultimate hero, the long-awaited and God-promised Messiah himself. John tells us the names of these men, Andrew and Simon and Philip and Nathaniel. There was also a man named John the Baptizer who was intriguing, dressed in his camel hair suits and with his diet of, of locusts and, and wild honey. John talks about John the Baptist before our, our scripture lesson this morning. And he had many uh, disciples who, who followed him, in, including some of these men. John denied that he was the Messiah, but he was the one who would point the way to him. And one day, as John saw Jesus walking towards him, he did just that. He said, look, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. As I picture this scene, I get the sense that, that Jesus just kept on walking. As, as John's disciple uh, looked around to see who John was talking about. And then he went on to talk in greater detail about this man. The next day, John the baptizer was at the same location. And Jesus was passing by again. So John said the same thing about Jesus. Look, there's the Lamb of God. This time Andrew, one of John's disciples, must have been paying closer attention when he heard John say this about Jesus. So he got up and he followed him, along with an unnamed disciple. Jesus noticed this, and so he stopped, and he asked them what they wanted. They asked Jesus where he was staying, and Jesus invited them to come and see for themselves. And so they did, and, and John, or, or Andrew, he spent the rest of the afternoon talking with and listening to Jesus. And he became convinced in, during that time that this indeed was the Christ. That John the baptizer had been replaced in his life. A new hero had entered into his life. Andrew, in turn, went and told his brother Simon about Jesus and brought him to Jesus. And he, too, became a follower as well. In fact, Jesus, when he met Simon, he predicted that he was going to someday be a hero himself by saying to him, you will be called Cephas, which when translated is Peter, which means rock. Then the next day, on his way to Galilee, Jesus came across Philip, who was a friend of Andrew and Simon, and he invited Philip to follow him. And so Philip did. And then we read that Philip found Nathaniel and told him about this new hero, Jesus. How they, they found the one Moses wrote about in the law and about whom the prophets also wrote. Jesus of Nazareth, the son of Joseph. Only Nathaniel, he had a much different reaction than, than Andrew and, and, and Simon and Philip did. This is how Nathaniel reacted. He said, you've got to be kidding. Can anything good 
come from that town. You see, Nathaniel was skeptical that the promised one of God would, would come out of this nondescript little village like Nazareth. And besides that, there seems to have been a, been a competitive spirit between Nathaniel's hometown, Bethsaida, and Jesus' hometown. Nazareth was the last place that Nathaniel would ever look for a hero. And yet, Nathaniel had a need for a hero to look up to. So Philip said, come, come and see for yourself. When Jesus saw Nathaniel approaching him, he said of him, here is a true Israelite in whom there is nothing false. And this was true as it could be about Nathaniel. And so he asked Jesus in amazement and awe, how do you know this about me? Jesus answered, I saw you while you were still under the fig tree before Philip called you. This was a place of thought and meditation. And what Jesus' statement about told Nathaniel was here was someone who had the ability to simply look at a person from a distance and ascertain not only what they were thinking, but also know who they were deep inside. And this was enough to move Nathaniel to immediately becomes, become Jesus' greatest fan and follower. And he said, Rabbi, you are the Son of God. You are the King of Israel. Jesus replied, You believe because I told you I saw you under the fig tree. But you will see even greater things than that. And then he added, I tell you the truth. You will see heaven open, and the angels of God ascending and descending on the Son of Man. In essence, Jesus was saying to Nathaniel, You say I am a hero now? Well, you ain't seen nothing yet. But most of us know what happens next. Nathaniel and the 11 other disciples, they follow Jesus around for three years. They hang on his every word. They, they witness some incredible miracles. They, they push each other around uh, to be his favorite and to, to try to share in his heroic power. They do all this until one fateful evening when he allowed himself to be arrested and they all ran away. And after he was crucified, they went and they hid. And I've, I've just got to believe that somewhere during that time, after Jesus died on the cross and was buried, Jesus, Nathaniel must have thought to himself, perhaps even under the same fig tree where Jesus had saw him before, like I said, can anything good come from Nazareth? Remember, Nathaniel was a man in whom there was nothing false. There was no guile, no deceit, no, no phoniness, no game playing with, within him. He couldn't accept Jesus as the Messiah who gave up his power. He couldn't accept Jesus as a hero who seemingly lost the game on purpose. He couldn't accept Jesus as a mortal man. 
nor should he. Like us, he, he could have had a hero like Mickey Mantle, who was a drunk. He could have had a hero like Jerry Garcia, who was the drug-addicted leader of the Grateful Dead Band. He could have had, as a hero, President John F. Kennedy, who was a womanizer. He could forgive them as we forgive them. He could appreciate and revere what he could about them, and if need be, replace them with others. But he couldn't do that with Jesus. It was either all or nothing in regard to him. He suffered like we all do. He bled like we all do. He died like we all do. So what was so special about him after all? Nathaniel must have thought. But then Jesus came back to life. Jesus rose again. Jesus conquered death. And Nathaniel would see heaven open and the angels of God descending and descending on the Son of Man at Pentecost, just like Jesus said he would. He would prove himself worthy of the title Christ, to whom every knee shall bow and every tongue confess. He would fulfill Nathaniel's need for the heroic in ours as well. Jesus fits every definition of what a hero is, who changes the boundaries, redefines the battles, and achieves victories so that others can rise to even greater heights. Born in an in obscure village, he was a child of a peasant woman. He worked in a carpenter shop until he was 30 years old. And for three years, he traveled around the country, stopping long enough to talk and to listen to people and help where he could. He never wrote a book. He, he never had a hit record or, or hit a home run. He never went to college or ran for public office. He never had a, a family or owned a house. He never did any of the things that usually accompany greatness. He had no credentials but himself. But when he was only 33 years old, the tide of public opinion turned against him. And his friends, they all rejected him. When he was arrested, very few wanted anything to do with him. And after the trial, he was executed by the state with admitted thieves. Only because a generous friend offered his own cemetery plot was there a place to bury him. And this happened all, uh, all happened 20 centuries ago. And yet today, he is the leading figure of the human race and the ultimate example of what love is. Now, it's no exaggeration to say that all the armies that have ever marched all the navies that have ever set sail, all the rulers that have ever ruled, all the kings that have ever reigned on this earth, all put together have not affected the life of mankind on earth like this one solitary life. We need our heroes. You can have as, as many as you want, be it on the, the baseball or, or football field or, or someone that you see in a, in a TV program or in the movies or in your family. 
or even on the street. But there is only one hero who meets our needs. And at the same time, inspires us and enables us to do the heroic as well. And that is Jesus. It's Jesus. It's Jesus. May we look up to him and praise his name this day. Amen. At this time, I'd, I'd like to uh, share a, a benediction with you, and then we will sing a closing hymn. Be confident of this, that he who began a good work in you will carry it on to completion until the day of Christ Jesus. We'll close this service by singing together once to every man and nation. 